So would you start us in prayer, please, sir? Thank you. Dear Jesus, we pray for this class. We pray that you would just, you would help Miss Radius know what to say to us so that we would understand this to the best of our ability. We pray that we would just see you in this chemistry, see your incredible hand through this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay, now a couple things. Number one, chemistry is a marathon. I actually emailed one of your moms that because she was going to let you come in without a book, and I was like, no, 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 and I gave her the information. Hopefully all of you have already done your first reading. Chemistry is really a marathon. What I mean by that is you must keep up. You can't think you're going to do this the night before unless you're just a genius and brilliant, and if you are, don't tell anybody else, okay? Um, but basically, you're going to need to do this little by little and keep up. Maybe this first chapter you looked at and you're a math whiz and you thought, this is a breeze. That's great. I'm glad you feel that way, but it's not always going to be just the math. Um, and so there's just, it's, it's okay. Some people love chemistry. And um, it, it's, it's very orderly. It's very neat. But it's, in my opinion, very hard. And so I want you to know that up front that it's doable, but it's hard. So that means you need to put the time in, not the night before. I mean, like all week put the time in, and you need to keep up. You will notice if you look on your syllabus, if you've already looked at it, we are not following the book, that more so in this course than any of the others that I teach. We have totally revamped the order of the book uh, after I taught this book the first time to a very bright group of students that were also had done physics. Um, so I trusted those young people. We sat down together and figured out the best way to go through this book so that it works the best for you. And so please follow the syllabus, and it's the best way for us to learn this book. Trust me on this, uh, because I actually use their input to put it together, and it, you will learn it much more smoothly if you'll just follow the way we go through it. Okay? Um, let's see. We... We will be doing, you, you, there are a few labs that I'll ask you to do at home just because we won't have time to do everything in here. Um, but the labs that we'll do in here, you should already know uh, how to do a lab write-up. In here, there will be mathematical calculations with the lab write-up. That will go under your observation section. So you would still have a purpose, a procedure, purpose why you're doing it, not because your mother made you or that I made you, okay? But actually what you're trying to learn, and then the procedure, please don't make that a paragraph form. Please make that a one, two, three, short, short, short list situation. And then the, the third part on this will be observations and calculations. So you're going to add something compared to what you did in biology or physical science. Observations and calculations. That would be where your drawings can go. You do not have to write it in words. If you can draw it, more power to you, man. Draw it, okay? And then make sure your calculations are there. And then your conclusion, once again, should be what, you were, what fact you were supposed to be learning from that lab and how maybe you could tie that in with your observations. Or maybe how your observations didn't help that at all, but you were still supposed to learn it, you know, if it, if it didn't work. <laughs> Reality check, right? Okay, so um, make sure that you... My absolute favorite chemistry teacher in college, and I had chemistry almost for four straight years because I'm a micro and cell biologist and there's a horrendous amount of chemistry and biochemistry. And... But my absolute favorite chemistry teacher was, I can only say I only had one chemistry teacher that I liked at all. <laughs> um, his, his name was Dr. Ward, and he was at Auburn University, and he was one of the freshman professors, which means freshman chemistry at a university is taught in a huge auditorium. I mean, I always said if you died in one of these rooms, nobody would know it for days, you know. <laughs> they're, they're huge, okay, and they just jam all these people in there. And he would, he would God bless him, I had him two terms, because after the first term I fell in love with him, and I said, okay, i got to take this guy again as much as I can. And how how he would start his course, Dr. Ward, I'm sure he's gone to be with the Lord by now because he was ancient then, okay? Um, but he, he would walk into this huge auditorium and we're all waiting, you know, for the professor, right? And he would walk in with a kid's book under his arm, a big Aesop's Fables. And he'd walk in with Aesop's Fables and he'd put it down and he'd open it and he'd just start reading The Tortoise and the Hare. Now, honestly, most of us are going, man, that old dude's in the wrong place. <laughs> 
you hadn't seen him before, you were sure he was gone and he was really sick, okay? And he starts reading Aesop's fables. And he'd sit there and he'd read the whole thing. And then he'd look up and he'd get this almost Yoda-like look on his face and he'd go, be the tortoise. And, and that was, you know, and it was a, kind of a scary, you know, like, be afraid, you know, he would be the tortoise. And his point was that you can't try to sprint in chemistry and plan on surviving, it's not gonna happen. Chemistry is a marathon. Keep up as you go along. If you have problems, I'm here for lunch. Uh, for online students, you need to email me because you need to get your questions answered and then keep plugging along because it is mathematical enough that it's going to continue to build on the previous concepts. And so if you're lost someplace, you're probably going to be in trouble later. Okay? Now I'll tell you when it's something you'll never see again while we're together and then you'll know, well, I need to pull this out when I get to college, you know, but I'm not going to deal with this again now. But most of the concepts you're going to learn over. Uh, the other thing is I'm glad your parents decided to do this because I'm going to tell you what right now. Chemistry in college, everything you learn this year, you would learn in one term in college. It would be twice as fast. And so this is much better for you to, to get these ideas and absorb these pieces of information at a pace that is more reasonable at this point in your life. Then when you go on to college and you see it and everybody else is choking, puking, and dying, you're going to look brilliant, okay? Ask Josh's brother. Um, <laughs> so, because, it, and Jay Wiles has a PhD in chemistry. This is an excellent book. It's an excellent course. And so we're just going to get through it together. And you guys are going to pray before you start, if you're wise. Um, pray before you read. Pray before you study. And then pray before you take your test. Don't just wait and pray before you take your test because that's kind of like a little late, <laughs> okay? Pray before you read and pray before you study. Then when you pray before you take your test, uh, you've already done a lot of praying, so it works a little better, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, let's go on and look at the first page of Module 1, please, because we have a long way to go today. And some pretty interesting concepts. First off, chemistry is the study of matter. And matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. And if you went ahead and did the experiments like I asked you to do uh, experiment 1.2 at home, and so if you did that, what did you see about air? Is it matter? Yes. yes. Why? It takes, up takes up space, right, because when you did that experiment, you saw that the air actually takes up space. Some of you that work with uh, boats or submarines or any of that stuff, you were already aware of that. And so that, that whole buoyancy thing. What about, and you, oh, you have to read all the labs. Even if you don't do the labs, you have to read all the labs. So make sure that you read all of the labs, because he assumes you have. Uh, what about the first lab? What do we learn about air from the first lab? Which was the one with the stick and the balloons? Thank you. Air has weight. So air has mass and air takes up space, which means air is matter, isn't it? And just memorize that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. There's really no shorter version of that. Okay? Has mass, takes up space. What was the thing that he said is all around us that doesn't have, that's not matter? Light. light. Because light is energy, but it doesn't have mass even though it takes up space. It does take up space, doesn't it? But uh, it doesn't have any mass. So light is energy, and so it would not qualify as matter. So on page three, he tells us that it's very important that we be able to measure the matter, because remember, science is what we can observe or experimentally repeat. And so we need to be able to impart the information that we have observed about the matter in chemistry, and we use units to do that. Um, he explained here how units are, can be very important, because when people aren't using the same units, disasters occur. And I'm not talking about the uh, curtain thing. I'm talking about the Mars climate orbiter and that uh, that was lost because of a difference in people not using their units. Um, the curtains are on page four. It shows you the picture on the curtains and the uh, Mars climate orbiter. But the point is that without... Um, you know what it makes me think of? If you went up to somebody... <laughs> I'm a bad person, but if you went up to somebody and said, you owe me 100 and didn't say what unit, I could give them a hundred pennies and go, well, you only said I owed you a hundred, and maybe I owed them a hundred dollars, you know? So it, the units make a big difference, don't they? They really do. Um, and he gave you the two examples here. Any numbers without units in chemistry are wrong. Even if your numbers are correct, they're wrong. Just be aware of that right up front. So if you don't have a unit more so than physical science, if you don't have a unit attached to every number that you're working with that is supposed to have a unit, it's wrong. And I'm going to tell you right now, 
Units are our friends. They're going to help you like you have no idea how they're going to help you through chemistry. So you want to keep the units with them because we're going to learn little tricks that the units will tell you where to go. See, unlike Jay Wiles, don't panic. When you read this book, he kind of assumes you know what he's talking about. You can just do these math problems when they get harder. Then don't panic. You guys that know me know I'm going to bring you in here and show you a very systematic way that you can tell from the thing how, what the next step is. Because I look at some of this stuff and hyperventilate. You know, if I didn't know, if I didn't know that I could actually step by step like drive the thing and that it drives itself, I would not survive. So I just want you people to know that right up front. That if you don't, when you read what he says and you go, where did he get that anyway? Don't panic when you get to class the next week. I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step how it drives itself. Okay? All right. So let's look at the metric system first. Now, we need the metric system in science because scientists use the metric system worldwide. Even though here in the United States we still use the English system, the metric system is the one that is used by scientists worldwide. Very important that we are comfortable with it and have some idea of what it is. Um, the different characteristics about matter that we want to be able to measure is mass, it's on table 1-1 one, one on page 5, mass, distance, volume, and time. First off, mass is measured in what? What's the base use, unit for mass in the metric system? Grams. Grams, thank you. And then in the English system it's slugs, not to be confused with the little guy that comes out after the rain. Okay, um, so and only on this test in this class will you have to know both of them. If, we, if, if or when you take physics, you will have to work with slugs intensively. But in this class, you won't. You'll just need to know it for this test. Um, and grams is what we will be using all along. Now, he mentions here that grams uh, are about the weight of a housefly. And I don't know about you, but I don't like walking around touching houseflies. So I'm going to give you something else that you do touch a lot that weighs a gram is a dollar bill. A dollar, I know y'all have touched one of those, and uh, a dollar bill weighs about a gram, so that gives you an idea. Okay, so a gram's not very much, is it? It's very, very light, uh, but that is our base unit. For distance, the base unit in the metric system, in, in our system, in the English system, it's a foot. In the metric system, the base unit is a meter, and so here's a meter. That's a meter stick, and that's a meter. Now, I want you to notice it's longer than a yard. On this side, you see where the yard ends right here? Okay, it's longer than a yard but just slightly longer, isn't it? So I always think of a meter as just a little over a yard, and that, that gives you a good feel for that distance. Um, volume, in the English system, we use gallons. That's why we still have gallons of milk and half gallons of ice cream and things like that. In the metric system, we use liters, and a liter is very, very close to a quart, if you're familiar with a quart. People are more familiar in America with liters because of two liter bottles of soda and liter bottles of water. We tend to use liters a little more than we use the other metric measurements here in the United States. So this is a liter, okay? Um, and then time, thank you. Jesus, we all use seconds, so we can just, we're all together on the time thing. Praise the Lord, right? That's a nice one. Okay, um, so the one other thing I want to tell you is with mass, that always confused me in college, the difference between mass and weight. So I want to just do this really quickly, and it's really, really easy. If you take physics, you'll be painfully aware of the difference. Weight is actually how the gravitational force pulls on the matter in your body, the mass. Mass is actually the matter in your body or the matter in a substance, which means, and you guys all know that a smaller astral body like the moon has less gravitational pull, correct? You know that? You have to know that or this won't make sense. And so the moon has less gravity because it's less massive. The earth has more gravity because it's more massive. And I just told you weight has to do with gravity. Mass has to do with how much of something there is, how much matter there is. Which means if I stand on a, on a scale here, and get nice and depressed, but that's okay. Stand on a scale here, and then I transport to the moon, Star Trek comes along, you know, and the Enterprise transports me to the moon, and I stand on my scale there, I'm going to weigh a lot less on the surface of the moon than I weigh on Earth because of the, the gravitational pull. Has my mass changed? No. That's going to take exercise and a lot of hard work, okay? So the mass is how much matter makes something up. Weight, now we measure mass by using weight because on most places on planet Earth we know what the gravitational force is so we can use our scales and, and to determine our mass that way because they've actually been calibrated for the gravitational force on planet Earth. 
and that's why we can do it. So, but they are, there is a difference, and I just want you to know that. Okay, um, then turn to page 7. On page 7, he shows you there some of the common prefixes that we use. Now, the metric system is used in most places because it really is a lot simpler than the English system. Anybody that's ever had to do conversions from inches to, to miles knows what I'm talking about. You know, you have to know that there's uh, 12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, 5,280 feet in a mile. Oh, my goodness. Or how about you ladies or maybe you gentlemen that like to cook? Have you ever played those games? Oh, my daughter asked me the other day, how many teaspoons are there in a tablespoon? And then you got to know how many tablespoons are there in a quarter cup? How many cups are there in a pint, a quart, a gallon? Ah, you know, and, and the math can get really intense with that. And so um, those are called alternative units because we have alternative units. Like if we were measuring this room, we would use what unit would we use to do the distance in this room? The English unit, what unit would we use? We either use yards or feet, wouldn't we? But would we use yards or feet to measure the distance from here in, in Boca Raton to Naples where I live? No. Not unless we're insane. Right. <laughs> what would we use to measure the distance from here to my home? We would use miles. So there's all these different units, these alternative units, depending on whether you're working with something really small or large in the English system. The metric system is much simpler. Thank you, Jesus. In the way that it's all base 10. Yes! <laughs> okay, because I can move zeros. You know, that's easy. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's all base 10. You have the base units, which for mass, we already said was what? What's the base metric unit for mass? Grams. Grams. You have to memorize this. What's the base metric unit for distance? meters. What's the base unit for volume? Liters. Liters. Okay, and then we know seconds is for everybody. Okay, so from there, when we measure, uh, let's say, our book, and we wanted to measure the size of our book, the metric unit that we would use, meters doesn't work for this, does it? Because the meter's just too big. So we need a smaller unit. So with the metric system, we would usually use the centimeter. If you have a normal uh, ruler nowadays, it has a side with uh, inches, but it also has a side with centimeters on it. And so we would use this side of the ruler, and we would measure our book with centimeters. And so what does centi mean? Now, this is where I'm going to be different than Jay Wiles, because I don't think just like he does, and I, so I try to make it pretty for me. So you, you know, as long as it's right and you show all your work, use which one you want, okay? Centi, how many cents are there in a dollar? One, hundred, right? If, if normal dollars. One hundred, okay. So, and how many years are there in a century? So what does centi mean? One one hundredth, okay. So we know that centi means one one hundredth, right? Or if you prefer, okay? So a centimeter is taking the whole meter and breaking it into a hundred pieces. And each one of those hundredths is a centimeter. Not hard. Just like each one of the cents is one hundredth of a dollar. Right? Not a hard thing. Okay, what if we needed to make it really small? Then we would go to milli. And milli, how many years are in a millennium? Thousand. thousand. So milli means one one thousandth. Whichever way you want to write it. Okay, and so a millimeter is actually, on these rulers, it's actually the little bitty lines. This is actually measured to the millimeter. That's how small these are. Okay, and then what if we wanted to go do a 5K, you know, it's five kilometers. Kilo is also a prefix we will use. Kilometers, kilometers. And kilo means times a thousand. Okay, so each of these would be times a hundredth, times a millionth, uh, excuse me, a thousandth, or times a, f a whole number, 1,000. So kilometers are very large compared to these others. Now, I had a class when I was teaching in the Christian school system that just couldn't get this. They just couldn't get that a, a centiliter was a very small volume, and a kiloliter was like a hot tub. Okay, so do you know what mean Mrs. Freites did? First off, I made him go walk off a kilometer in the heat <laughs> together in class. You think they ever forgot it after that? <laughs> then I took out a 
barrel and got them a leader and made them start doing a kill a leader. <laughs> they got it after that. <laughs> They're like, okay, we got it, you know? So I want you to understand, remember, kilo, hot tub. Kilometer, great distances comparatively, okay? And then centi, small, like the cents in a dollar. Milli, smaller, okay? You have to have those three memorized, and they're the bolded ones in table 1.2. Milli, centi, and kilo. Now there's others here, aren't there? There's deci, there's deca, there's hecta, um, and if I remember correctly, the Latin is getting smaller and the Greek are getting larger. You know, they're the whole numbers, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just you don't have to know all these. You guys are familiar with uh, mega, because they use those in the computers. Megabytes, right? Uh, and, and kilobytes. So you're familiar with these whether you know it or not. I know you guys are also computer savvy and my, my 12 year old still teaching me how to use my eye touch. But anyway, um, I, had, I had it like six weeks before I was, I was too afraid to touch it, you know? And she's going, come on, mom. <laughs> so, but you guys are savvy to all that, so it's cool. Okay, uh, now let's turn over to, let's turn over to page nine for just a minute. He calls this the factor labeling method. Not all of you had physical science with me, I know that. Um, and in physical science, those of you that did have me for that, I called this something different because I don't like that name. Does anybody remember what it's called? Line. Well, it is Todd's line, you're absolutely right, Zach. But the technical term is dimensional analysis. You're going to be using a lot of dimensional analysis in chemistry. And basically, dimensional analysis is times line and funky ones, <laughs> okay? And so if you don't know what I'm talking about, just bear with me here, because the people that were in physical science, they were tortured with this earlier. And I told them then they would see this again, and this is when. Now, I don't like using fractions within fractions. And when you put a decimal within a fraction, that to me is a fraction within a fraction. So I do mine a little differently than he does, and I want to show you how. Also, everybody here knows that if I have anything multiplied by what gives me the same value? One. one. I can multiply anything by one, and I get back the exact same mathematical value, don't I? That's a rule. Okay. Another rule is that if I have a dimension, the, the same unit, top and bottom, that I can cancel them out, right? Numerator, denominator, whoosh, if you find it in top and bottom, it goes bye-bye, doesn't it? Yay, and I have less to deal with. Another basic thing that we need to remember is units like grams, liters, kil kilometers, milliliters, any of these function just like variables in algebra. Do you hear me? They function just like variables, you guys know what I'm talking about? In algebra, like x's and y's in algebra. So what does that mean? Well, can I add this together? No, I can add that together. Why? Because they have the exact same variable. That's an ugly x, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are looking at that going, no. Okay, <laughs> you can do that, right? And so the same would be true with, with units. You could add two grams. Uh, you can't add two grams to four kilograms without converting one of these. You have to put them both into grams or both into kilograms. Does that make sense so far? Okay. And if you multiply two units, let's say x times x, what do you get? x squared. So if you multiply grams times grams, what do you get? Grams squared. You probably have done math problems before. I know you have by this time. Uh, done math problems where you dealt with centimeters cubed in volume problems, and you've de dealt with meters cubed. Those are just those units being multiplied together, aren't they? So remember that they function just like variables, okay? Treat them the same way. And some of you are going, no, not more algebra. Yes, more algebra. <laughs> okay. Um, on page nine, we have the example problem. And I'm trying to think. You know what? Let's go right to the, the problem on page 10. I'm going to show you how I want you guys to do this. And I'm going to start... Um, with Olivia. Olivia, would you please read 1.1, the on your own 1.1 on page 10 for me? Yes. A student measures the mass of a book as 12,321 grams. What is the book's mass in kilograms? Thank you, ma'am. We are on page 10, uh, on your own 1.1. Are we okay? Okay. Now, guys, those of you that took physical science, this is going to be reminiscent of that, where I taught you then 
when you're doing these kind of problems, you're going to write down first, first, when you do a math problem, for the benefit of the people that have never had me before, for the benefit of the home people. Whenever you're doing a, a word problem, this includes in math. This works. Whenever you're doing a word problem, first you pray. Always pray. Okay. <laughs> Always pray. <laughs> Second, you read the word problem twice. Uh, now do this for me through this whole class. The first, and all of chemistry is word problems. I'm going to tell you this right now. They're only going to get harder than this. The first time you read it through, you read it so that your brain can go, ah, I'm doing a word problem. Okay, and then you're done. The second time you read it through, your brain is supposed to be looking for what I like to call the given and the get to. You're going to write down the information. This works in physics too. Okay, this works. It just will carry you through word problems forever. All right, <laughs> and so... You go ahead and you look for the given and the get to. What's the information? And then if there is an equation involved, you're going to write down the given and the get to, the equation that you know applies to that, and then you start playing with it. That's how it works. Okay, here, the given is this number, 12,321 grams. The get to is kilograms. I want to see that on your paper. I want to see the given and the get to written on your paper. Now when all we're doing is converting from one dimension to another, this is simple. You write down the given again, and this is why Zach said times line, <laughs> because in physical science I torture them. I make them say times line over and over again. And if you were in a school, I would make you do that. Because I found that I had, later in the year, chemistry students would come up to me on exams and go, Mrs. Freitas, I have no idea what to do with this. And I would smile at them and say times line, honey. And they'd go, oh, okay. And they'd go back to their seat and they'd be able to work the rest of it. It's a very powerful tool if you'll let it help you, okay? So, you write the given. You write times line. Now, we want to make this a funky one. I know for this part right now, half of you are going, man, I could do this in my head. Why is she lab laboring this point? Because it's not always going to be this clean. It's going to get real ugly eventually. And as long as you know how to use this technique, you're just going to look brilliant. It's going to be fine. So we got to get the technique on the simple stuff. Does that make sense? Okay. So we want to make a funky one here. Whatever is here has to, and I can say this without flinching in chemistry, whatever is here unit-wise always goes here. I don't care if you're working with moles, molecules, you know, when we get into all the chemistry stuff, whatever is here has to go here. Why? Because then they'll cancel out. And that's what we want to happen, right? We want to get from here to an answer somewhere over here. So we want to get rid of that. We want to use it and get rid of it, correct? So we, because remember, you know, this is really this, but that's the last time I'm going to write that. Okay. And so we want this to happen. Where are we trying to get to? We're trying to get to here. So in this case, it's easy. I'm just going to go like that. Okay. Now I have the beginnings of my funky one. I have it in the order that I need it. This is very important because a lot of chemistry is these weird fractions that you're going to be multiplying things by and they're going to get much heavier. And this guides you to where the numbers go. Your units, like I said, there are friends. Our units tell us where the numbers go. Praise the Lord. And so this tells us. Now, this is where I differ from Jay Wiles. The next question I ask, if it's one of these, I ask, who's the big boy? Because I don't like fractions in my fractions. And so I know kilograms are bigger than grams. So he's going to get the one because he's the big boy. How many grams are in a kilogram? A thousand. So this is where he and I really differ, because I just don't like fractions and fractions. Okay, so I'm leaving it up to you how you do it. All right, then we know that these will cancel. This will be divided. This will end up being 12.321 kilograms, because we're left with that. We get that divided by that. That gives us that number, no problem. You're good on that, right? The math should be easy on this. Okay, Laura, would you read uh, 1.2 for us, please? If the glass contains 0.121, 100. Oh, you can say 0. Oh, okay. 0.121 liters. Liter of milk. What is the volume of milk in milliliters? Thank you, ma'am. So we're going to go like this. And notice I'm using a large L instead of a small L because it can very easily be confused with a 1. So make sure you make things so that they don't get confused. Okay? So once again, we're just going to write this again. Oh, and in chemistry, we're going to read everything as easily as possible. And I'm going to teach you guys that when we actually are reading them where there's long things, I teach you to go that... And then you just keep going <laughs> because we'll just waste all our time reading the stuff, half of it. So we'll just do the best we can. All right. So we have 0.121 liters and we go 
as Zach said, times line, that's the next thing, you don't have to think up until now, you just do, okay? What do I put down here? What is my, my unit here? So that's what I know goes here, always in chemistry. Isn't that nice? Woo, that's nice. What do I want up here? Milliliters. milliliters. Now I have to ask myself, who's the big boy? The liters is the big boy. Milliliters are a little bitty, okay? And so actually, that's what that was. I said centiliter before. This is actually a milliliter. I'm sorry. There's a thousand of these in there. A centiliter would have been this. This field would be a centiliter, so I do apologize for that mistake, okay? So this, you'd do a hundred of these to fill this. You'd do a thousand of these to fill this, okay? What's the other? Ah, uh, <laughs> hundred to a thousand, deci, deciliter. Fill this, I had, to, I had to do the math, John. Deciliter, that would be a deciliter because there'd be ten of this, okay? Okay. And so here, once again, your liters cancel. Oh, I didn't do this. There's a thousand of these. Hopefully you knew that. There's a thousand of these, so this is going to end up giving us this, milliliters. That's really ugly, but you get the drift. Okay, any questions on that? Let's do the third one. Katie? On the successional basketball court, the distance from the three-point line to the basket is 640.08 centimeters. What is this distance in meters? Thank you. So there's your given, there's your get to. We're going to write the given again. Times line, what goes down here? What goes up here? Who gets a one? What's he get? 100. If you do it this way, unless you're dealing with centi, somebody gets a one and everybody else gets a thousand. Unless it's one of those that you didn't have to memorize, okay? It's just real simple this way. I like simple. I like simple. I need as much simple as possible. Okay, so the centimeters go. We are left with 6.4008 meters, and we're done. So far, so good? Any questions? Okay. Um, then he says that we need to be able to convert between the units, between the English and the metric. And on table 1.3, he gives us the conversions. Those are your funky ones. Those are your funky ones. You do not have to memorize them. Thank you, Jesus. He gives them to you. Frequently, when he tells you you don't have to memorize something and he gives it to you on a chemistry test or a physics test, it's right under the word test. I don't know about you, but I always miss it and I'm freaking out, looking all over the test going, <gasps> where is it? And it's right under the word test. Nobody looks there. Okay, so make sure you look right under the word test if it's something you're not supposed to know, you know, know for yourself, but it's supposed to be given to you and he doesn't give it in the problem, look right under the word test. Okay, so you people that know me know I get real stressed on tests and I hyperventilate and, you know, have to pray a lot and so I don't pass out. Anyway, so a very stressful thing for me. Okay, <laughs> all right, so we'll use these as funky ones. Let's look at the on your own and we're going to use the same technique on page 11, on your own 1.4. Isaac, would you read 1.4 for us, please, sir? How many slugs are there in 123.5 kilograms? Thank you, sir. So here's our given. Here's our get to. Once again, you're going to write your given again. Times line. Ooh, shame on me. Okay. What goes down here? Kilograms. Has to be. Kilograms always is going to go, whatever's here has to go here. Has to. What are we putting up here? Slugs. Slugs, because that's where we're trying to get to. Now we look at our chart. Now we look at our chart. Not until then. Put your, always put your, do you know, later, I'm going to build you chemistry problems that will cover this entire board with no numbers. All they're going to be is times line and the dimension. Times line, next dimension. Times line, next dimension. Then we'll go back and put the numbers in. That is the safest way to do chemistry. It really, really is. Because then your numbers are going in the right places. Okay? And so, here, you can't do a who's the big boy, can you? Because it's not all within the metric system. You have to look here. What number is next to slug on table 1.3? No, no, no. What, what enable is in front of the word slug? One. So I'm going to put it in front of the word slug here. I know this is like some of you are going, why is she doing this? I've had students get this confused, so I want to be very, very clear on this. What number is in front of kilograms in that funky one? So you're going to also put it in front of kilograms here. I've had students get this far and then put them in the wrong place. I don't want you to do that. Whatever it is on the chart, that's what you're going to put it next to here also. 
Okay? And then you're going to get your calculator out, and you're going to do this number divided by this number. The kilograms are going to leave, and it's going to give you a number of slugs. Who has the number of slugs that gives you? 8.464. We'll just leave it at that. Slugs. Okay. And so, does everybody see how that works? Notice once again, what are we building? Dimensional analysis is building funky ones. That's what it is. We're building these weird ones. Whatever's here always goes here. Put whatever you're trying to get to up here. Put in what makes it a one. And then work with it. Okay. We're going to keep going. Now, he says more complex conversion units. So, turn the page. And here, let's look at uh, number page 13, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. Whenever, well, let's just, uh, Daniel, read for us 1.6, and I'll teach it as we do it. Balloon is blown up so that its volume is 100 milliliters. What is the volume in kilometers? Thank you, sir. So that's our given. We want to know it's how many kiloliters that is. Now, once again, you start just like you always do. Times line. What goes down here? Milliliters. It has to. But can I put kiloliters up there? I don't know how many kiloliters there are in a milliliter or vice versa. So I want to go to the common base unit that they have in common. The base unit they have in common. What's the base unit that kiloliters and milliliters have in common? Liters. So I'm going to go there. And then whatever's here always goes here. Always, always. And now what am I going to put up here? Now I can put kiloliters up here. So everybody see why these units are so important? Okay? And you see that whatever's here always goes here, whatever's here always goes here. It drives itself if you know the technique. I just like that kind of stuff. I wish somebody drove them for, for me anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, who gets the one here? Leaders does. What does this number get? A thousand. A thousand. Good. Who gets the one here? Kiloliters. Remember, that's the hot tub, all right? And so what is this one going to get? A thousand. Okay. And so now you're going to go, this is 10 to the third, and that's 10 to the third. And so we're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to go 0. 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is that it? Yes. Thank you. I hate doing this stuff in my head up here. It's just an easy way for me to mess up 2 plus 1, and I will. And I, I'll just tell you that I have days that that happens. Did I, wrong number of zeros? Two zeros after decimal. Point zero zero one. Oh, two zeros after decimal, so I should be here. Thank you very much. Okay. Does everybody see how that works? Let's do one more. Let's just do uh, 1.8. 1 on 1.8, he's using some that you don't have to have memorized. Shame on him. Uh, no, you know what? Let's not do that one. I don't want to deal with all the zeros. Let's deal with the one before it. We have 2.0 kilometers, and we want to know how many centimeters. Once again, you're just going to go to the base unit. So you're going to go times line, kilometers here. What's the base unit? Meters. That goes here. Now we can get to centimeters real easily. Who gets the one? Good. So he gets a thousand. I'm going to just put it as ten to the third. Who gets the one? And this one gets a hundred, right? And then you just go from there. This cancels, this cancels. Make sure your dimensions cancel. That always helps. If they don't cancel, something's wrong and your numbers are going to be wrong, okay? So let them help you. Let them be your friend. So, okay. So you know how to do that. Now, the next thing is derived units, and that would be like your meters cubed and your centimeters cubed that you've already worked with in your math class. And so let's turn over. On page 15, he tells you something that's very important that you have to memorize, and that's why it's bolded. He tells you that one cubic centimeter is a milliliter. That's this. One cubic centi whoops, centimeter. I'm just going to show you. See this? You've seen these little blocks before if you're a homeschooler. Most of you have. And <laughs> your mother tortured you with them as a child. <laughs> you probably have bad dreams about them. Please forgive me. Anyway, I want you to notice that that's a centimeter. Okay? That's how big it is. A centimeter cubed actually holds a milliliter. And so a cubic centimeter is a milliliter. If I took this and filled it up and, and with water and went chuk, 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 chuk a thousand times and I, after killing myself, no, I'm kidding, but after, after doing that, it would be a liter. 
Okay? So you have to memorize that. Why? Because cubic centimeters, I'm just going to write this here real quickly. What does that dimension represent as far as distance, volume, um, the, the base unit? What does it represent? Is it time? Is it distance? Is it volume? It's actually, the base unit is a distance, isn't it? The base unit is a dif distance. This base unit is volume. This is a funky one bridge between distances and volumes. Did you get what I just said? It's a very powerful tool. This is a funky one bridge between distances and volumes so that you can get back and forth between them. So this is one of those little things you want to stuff in your proverbial mental pocket and hang on to it. Because when you find you have a problem, there's a really hard problem on the first test, and I don't know why he does that, but he does. And, and it, you need this bridge. This is a very good bridge. Okay, so hang on to that. Now, when we use these dimensions that are cubed, we have to play a little more carefully. So look on page 16. On page 16, uh, <laughs> Eli, I'm not going to torture you reading that. I'm going to let you do the next one. I'll read 1.9. <laughs> uh, Braggart tells you that he walks 100,000 centimeters each day. He expects you to be impressed with such a big number. Should you be impressed, convert the distance measurement to miles in order to determine whether or not to be impre impressed. Okay. Okay, well, this one's not even using that, but we're going to go ahead and do this. We got 100,000 centimeters and we want to know how many miles that is. So we have to go back to table 1.3, don't we? So let's go back to table 1.3. Actually, even before we do that, what could I write down just to get started? I have to write the given again, don't I? Right, 100,000 centimeters times line. What goes down here? Good. But I'm not sure where I'm going here. I need to know, because I, I can't put miles there. I just don't know what that is. So I go back on page 10, and I look at table 1.3, and I have a conversion of 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Hang on just a sec. Good. Okay. So what can I do? I can go from centimeters to inches, can't I? Right? Okay, so I'm going to do that. Then, what am I going to put down here? Inches. Have to. I have to put inches down here. And do I know how many inches there are in a mile? No. Do I know how many inches there are in a foot? Yes. Good, that'll work. So I'm going to go like that. What goes here? Feet. Good. And do I, do I know how many feet there are in a mile? Yes. Okay, now can I do this? Yes, because now I'll just go 1, 2.54, I'll go 1, whoops, I'll go 12 and 1, I can do this, <laughs> and I'll go 5, 2, 8, no. oh, 0 yeah. and 1, did I do it right? It's okay, John, I'm having trouble today, so it works. Does everybody see? Do you see why I don't put my numbers in until I'm done putting my bridges together? And then go back and make sure you put the numbers in the right place. Okay, <laughs> that, that could help. Um, <laughs> and then make sure everything cancels like it's supposed to. Okay, then you're going to put in your calculator, um, 100,000 divided by that, divided by that, divided by that, you're going to get some strange number and you're going to say miles. Did the guy walk very far? No. How far did he walk? Less than a mile. Less than a mile. Oh my goodness, my dog would hate him. My dog wakes me up every morning if I happen to try to sleep in because he's like, we have to walk now. Get out of bed now. And then as I walk out the door, the next thing I'm hit with is me because the horse is like, why haven't you fed us yet? Then you can walk, you know? So that's my life and it's a good one. All right, let's look at 110. Uh, Eli, would you read that one for us, please, sir? How many centimeters cubed are in 0 0.0045? Thank you, sir. Okay, that's our given, that's our get to. We write the given again. What goes down here? Kiloliters. Kiloliters. Here's one of these where you're going from liters to meters. Ooh. But what do I know about centimeters cubed and liters? One centimeter cubed equals one milliliter, right? So where do I want to take this? I want to get it to milliliters, don't I? So I'm going to go liters to milliliters, right? And then I can go milliliters to centimeters cubed, can I? 
and then I would go back and put in my numbers. Does everybody see how that works? Okay, let's try the next one. 